All right, man, torture talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Look, man, look, man, look, man. Let me fix this camera. I know it's a little messed up. Let me fix that. There we go. Look, man, look, man, look, man. So today's episode, I want to talk about the lies that Game has told throughout the career, throughout his career. And we're going to get into that. You know what I'm saying? Before I get into that, this is the after hours show. So usually this comes out any time of the day, whether it's 12 midnight, whatever. And I got a couple of after hours shows coming up. And um, yeah, so let's get to it. So this, uh, this episode is about game and all the lies he told. Before I get into that, you know, I got to get my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. They called me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000 subscribers. And let me know where you're from too, man. I really appreciate that. So we're going to get right into this clip, man. Talking about how many lies have game have told throughout his career. All right, man. So let's get it. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> Dre records to being in there with, um, you know, the, on the G on the albums and, and being in there right, you know, at the tail, like the middle tail end of Get Rich or Die Trying. I ain't never said like, yo, I wrote this certain song. I don't give a fuck about that, my nigga. Crazy that Ye did more for me in the last two weeks than Dre did for me my whole career. Eminem is the only... Damn, that's crazy. This has got to get real interesting. Rapper that, that nobody ever... That Ye did more for me in the last two weeks than Dre did for me my whole career. Eminem is the only rapper that, that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. And, 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 and I used to think Eminem was better than me. So what you saying right he now? Not, he not. He He's not. Challenge, game. hey, hey, challenge it. Game, you don't want to go versus against Yes, Eminem. I do. What do you mean? Oh. Yeah, I do. The fuck you mean? Yeah, you drunk, nigga. <laughs> you drunk, boy. You drunk, boy. You drunk, boy. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've gotten to a point where whenever I hear the game say something, I don't believe it. There have been so many instances where the game would say something in one interview, and then in the next interview, he'll contradict what he said. To me, the game is the kind of guy who lies about everything, right? And I know guys like this, they'll tell you a story, and while you're listening to them, you're thinking, no, this can't be true, bro. This is, logically, this can't, nothing makes sense. But because they've lied to you so many times, and you know who they are as a person, you expect them to lie to you. So while they're talking, you're like, I know this guy's lying to my face right now, but sometimes he buys the beers, so I'll give him a pass. Right? It's yeah, that yo, that is a, that's such a great way to put that. I, yo, I think Kendrick got a song like that on "To Pimp a Butterfly." You ain't got a lie to pick uh to kick it, my nigga. I think that I think he wasn't dissing game. I don't think he's dissing game, but obviously, I think that that is that song is basically what game is you know what i'm saying like if you listen to that song and you listen to how game flip flops one day he's this way next day this way like it's just crazy to, to me how anybody takes game serious like it really does like he's like he's so all over the place almost like you have to give the game a pass because he made some really good music the game dropped about 10 albums and a lot of people didn't think he would bounce back after he began beefing with 50. So as far as his career goes, the game has proven himself. But sometimes it's almost as if the game forgets that he's on camera and we can watch him in one interview and watch him in another interview and compare notes. And we can tell, brother, you're lying, right? So the game and WAC 100 get on a clubhouse call and they begin talking about the documentary and who wrote it. But I'll get to this in a minute. But swiftly after this conversation ends, WAC 100 says something really ridiculous. He goes on to imply that the game wrote 50s, what up gangsta? 
Now instead of the game say Now I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't I wouldn't say he did. I highly doubt that. Nah, I, hold on. I didn't write that song. What are you talking about? The game didn't really speak on it. 50 wrote what you heard him write, what you heard him say on the record. Like, right. I don't understand what your question is. Like, when you heard 50 rap on the documentary, that's what he wrote. Hey, um, hold on. Wait, wait. Look, I'm going to speak on something yeah. you don't never uh. speak on. What up, cuz? What up, blood? What up, gangster? Who you think wrote that? <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whack be trolling a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I would love to have a conversation with Whack 100. I don't, I'm gonna try to figure, find out what clubhouse he'd be in. But I wanna have a one on one conversation with him because I wanna ask him some questions about the gang life in, in California. Yeah, because I wanna learn more about the whole denominations because I think it's fascinating. I think they definitely should make, I know they have some documentaries and stuff about, but I want to learn about the gang culture and, and not the gang culture in these other states. The reason why I say California, because I think it's so prevalent there and it means much more than what we think it is. So I want to definitely talk to WAC 100 about it. I know he know a lot about it, but uh, I don't think he wrote that song. Uh, uh, I think he capping. I think he playing around. Now he just don't be speak. Bro, just don't be beating his chest, bro. He likes a lot of shit. He can beat his chest. What he say? Uh, I sit back. What he say? He black. Don't, I sit back. Twist. Okay, cool. So the game does. Now I will say this. I believe that the game does write a lot of stuff. Now that's one thing I can't take away from the game. I believe he's a he. I don't. Know, I won't say he's a fat, a phenomenal rapper. But he's a fast writer, I can see, because I can tell that he, what's his name? But he got a lot of albums. So obviously he knows what he's doing when it comes to rapping. But I don't, me personally don't think that he uh, is a groundbreaking lyricist. I don't think that, but let's keep it going. An interview. And the interview is like, okay, game, did you write What Up Gangsta? And then the game says, nah, I didn't write that song. But I was in the studio when it happened, and I influenced the creation of the song. You wrote What Up Gangsta for 50. I didn't write What Up Gangsta for 50. I was in there and part of the influence. He ain't, you know, he ain't capping. He really, really? bought that life, yeah. but so am I. So that's where, <laughs> we, that's where we bumped heads at. But yeah, yeah no, nah, I didn't do no right. I don't... The thing is, I don't think that the question was, would you about that life? And I see Game does that a lot. He always want to validate who he is and how he is and where he know and who he from and where he know, uh, where he from and who he know. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I kind of like, I see him doing that a lot in a lot of interviews. He always got to show that he's the tough guy in the room. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for some people, it just don't work, but... I, I could see him. I could see him saying the whole the hook part. Maybe he influenced Fifty and saying, but I think Fifty, I think Fifty did a song before that using that hook. You know what I'm saying? I think he. I think he used that. It, it was similar to that. So I, I think that that's cat. 50 50 and do no writing for me but here's where the story gets interesting according to 50 game wasn't even around when they were recording what up gangster so at this point it becomes a question of who do you believe 50 the guy who has a reputation for telling the truth most of the time or the game now let's get into more lies that the game has told now let's go back to the clubhouse interview with whack 100 and the game before talking about the song What Up Gangsta, Game talks about 50's involvement in the documentary once more and essentially says that 50 didn't really do much for him on this album. But here's where the problem lies. When the Game and 50 were beefing around 2005, 50 went on to claim that he wrote most of the album and we're talking about the documentary here. And naturally the Game denied these claims saying that he wrote the whole thing except for 50's parts. But it's 2024 now and thanks to YouTube I don't think that 50 wrote the whole album. I know he did maybe about four songs on there. But I don't think he wrote the whole album. And another thing, too, I don't think uh, be just because 
just because somebody write the hook doesn't mean that they wrote the whole verse. Like, I don't think 50 wrote Gang's verses. Like, on Hated to Love It or This How We Do and uh, what was the other one um, that they did? I don't think he wrote wrote uh, game, uh, Gang's verses. He probably wrote the hook because he was all over the hook. So maybe when he say he wrote the song, I think a lot of people get it confused by him saying he wrote the entire song and he gave him the verse. Like, I don't think that that's the case. But let's keep it going. And the internet, the reference tracks for the documentary have come out. And it turns out 50 did write a lot of the documentary. I mean, just the other day I heard a reference track for Hire. And I was like, not that one too, game. That's probably one of my favorite game tracks. And now it's not even a game track anymore. That's a 50 cent track. Party get the jump and we get to stand up the spot. Okay, let's play my way show it. Now 50 actually got to speak about his input on the documentary and according to him he wrote about six songs on the project. He wrote Higher, Special, West Side Story, Hated to Love It, How We Do and Church for Thugs. So essentially 50 gave the game his biggest hits and the game repaid 50 by attacking his brand. Do you, you, you talk I don't see, again, I think that those songs were already orchestrated with the hooks and 50 had a verse on it, and I think Game came in and he added his his song his verse to it. I mean, I mean, I don't know if people could say that that's because somebody give you a, a hook in a in a verse that means they wrote the whole song. I don't know about that. I mean, I could say that okay, maybe you know you you were a part of the song, you were featured. I mean, I don't know. That's that's a good question. How can you really say somebody wrote the whole song because they wrote the hook in the verse? They could say they wrote the majority of the song, and then you put your verse on it. Maybe you could say, "Well, I gave him that, and he just put a verse to it." I mean, and maybe that's the case, but I don't. I wouldn't say he wrote the song. I mean, that's that's difficult. That's a very difficult one for me, because I, I I don't know how to even take that for somebody to like. It's kind of like up in the air for me. I mean, I don't know kind of perplexed talk about writing did you only write for, for g-unit artists because like yesterday i saw a a reference track for high elite yeah and is you is you doing yeah I did. I did what's the name uh six songs on that album right yeah. well everybody knows that yeah, but. Yeah. now what makes this story even worse is that the game planned this all along now jim jones did an interview a while back and in the interview, he spoke about the game. The game came to him before he blew up on G-Unit and said that once he gets on, he's going to destroy G-Unit from the inside. I remember that whole shit. He was telling me, yo, they about to sign me to G-Unit. You did, but as soon as they sign me and I get platinum and all that, I'm doing what 50 did the job and all this type of shit. I'm like, you sure you want to do that? He's like, fuck that blood. i like, this nigga is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't understand that. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't understand some of these rappers. Maybe they just don't like people. I don't understand their whole motive behind doing certain things. It's like, I don't know. Maybe it's some, maybe, maybe they be doing some shady stuff to each other. I don't know why they do the things that they do. I have no clue. You know what I'm saying? But I am going to say, he kind of orchestrated this. But the thing about the game that I noticed at the time, he was doing stuff to try to get attention. I think he kind of felt like if he dissed people, people would pay more attention to him. And I don't know if it was 50 Cent that said, I believe 50 Cent said this, and it wasn't about game. I think he just said, I think it was about Rick Ross. It wasn't about game. He said, 50 Cent said, Every, all attention isn't good attention. So if you get attention on you, and people uh, people find out and they listen to your music, that can actually hurt your career because they find out you ain't as good as as, as you was portraying to be because they start to listen to you. So he said that now, that really made a lot of sense. But I don't know about the, I don't know about the inside thing. I mean, Jim Jones saying it, I guess it's true. But here's where things get even more ridiculous. After destroying the group from the inside, which was kind of a snake thing to do because without these guys, nobody would know who you are. After destroying the brand, the game was like, 
Ah, oh, damn, I wish we were back together, man. I really miss the times when it was just me and 50, you know, in the studio recording music, right? After the game went on to destroy G-Unit, he showed up in multiple interviews after that, begging for the reformation of the group, with him included. That whole situation. What I, basically what I was doing was that I was just letting the homie know that it's 2010, it's a new day, and it's really, it's really time to get money. Every now and then, you gotta push your back together sometimes, so all I was saying to 50 was that, why not get out here, bring it, like, you know, make Voltron and shit, yeah. bring it back game is one of those type of dudes he's so surface level on everything and a lot of times i listen to the game and i could see why he don't get along with people because i could i could kind of listen to the game and i'm not i'm not saying i don't know game personally i'm just going off what i see here on these interviews i don't know him personally he could be the toughest guy in the world he could just be putting on an act i don't know but from what I see on here, he's definitely one of them type of people that you don't want to have around. Because he, they'll tell you, he's one of the type of people that'll tell you whatever you want to hear, and then three days later, he's a whole nother person. He definitely has bipolar. He's definitely bipolar. In some type of way, I believe he's di he got to be, I ain't going to say diagnosed with it, but he, I don't know, man. He's bipolar. He's definitely, oh, he's passive aggressive. Not bipolar. He's passive aggressive. That's the game. The game reminds me of certain people in my life, right? These people are impulsive, emotional, and their actions are very immature and driven by ego and pride. These are the type of people that when you're around them, you don't know what's going to happen. And the worst part is this kind of person will attempt to destroy your life and then they'll come back in like, hey, do you want to be friends again? But the thing is, they don't really want to be your friend. They want to take more from you. And that's what I think of the game every time he says he wants to reconcile with G-Unit. He just wants the bag. Now let's talk about another time the game lied, right? And believe me when I say there are so many moments that we could be here for days. Bring it back full circle and get some off the money. That's where everybody wanted to have it anyway. So what I was saying was I wasn't opposed to it. So the game does another interview. And in this interview, he says something outlandish, right? He says that when he was beefing with 50 and he had the whole G-Unit campaign going, Jimmy Iovine paid him $1 million to stop saying G-U-Not. And that's because the G-U-Not campaign was hurting the brand. A lot of people don't know this. Like 50 and, uh, and Jimmy Iovine, they, they gave me a million dollars to uh, to stop saying G-U-Not. They wrote me a check. They bought it. Bought the I had to trademark the G-U-9. And you remember when I was going around with the rat and doing yeah. all that shit? Yeah. Hurt, killed G-Unit. You stopped seeing the candies. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I don't know about the whole gu Not campaign was so big that they had, it was hurting the brand. They gave you a million dollars to stop, to buy the trademark. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I know that I know they probably I know y'all probably had a conversation about it, but giving you a million dollars to stop saying something and you and 50 owned the rights to your to your music at the time. I don't know. I just think that was counterproductive if you did do that. I don't know if they gave you a million dollars for that. I just don't I don't I don't get it. I don't see how 50 would agree to something like that. And if he did, I that would be shocking to me. The candy cane, tank tops, and all that. All the, the whole G unit, Mark Echo, all this, the shoes, all that. I do something really smart. He trademarked the G U Not name, and this legally prevented the game from using G U Not again. And the thing is, if the game decided to use G U Not, he would have to pay fifty every time he said it. Talk about playing chess. So once again, the game is caught in another lie, and the lies continue. Here's another one. So in 2002, the gamer shows up to a Drink Champs interview. They get to talking and he gets liquored up. And then he says one of the most outrageous things he's ever said in his career. Kanye did more for him in two weeks than Dre did for him his entire career. Crazy that Ye did more for me in the last two weeks than Dre did for me my whole career. Now, this is just another case of the game saying one thing. That's crazy. I, I seen that interview and I turned it off. Not after that, but I turned it off because I just see like, you ever watch somebody and you just know that they just be capping about a lot of stuff. And you're like, nigga, just be honest. Like, why you gotta, why you gotta pretend to be this or say this? Like, 
he just it's like if I, I felt like he was putting he was putting on a uh he was trying to start he was trying to get a role in a movie or something it's like I, I every time i see game interviews i feel like he's trying to he's trying to he's being cast in front of people and we're the we're the we're sitting there watching him while he performs in front of us and he acting like he's getting a part to the movie it's just crazy to me he, kanye did more for you in two weeks in two weeks than he did for you in your whole career? Come on, bro. And wow. then another time he will say something different. You drop Dr. Dre's name in every song that you make, bro. We should make a drinking game, right? Listen to a game album and just take a shot every time Dr. Dre's name is mentioned. I'm telling you now, by the end of that album, you'd be wasted. Just gone. You see an aftermath change and don't ask for Dre. I'm a legend now. Fuck when I pass away. So it's like we've heard you praise Dr. Dre over and over again. So now the game does an interview with Vlad, and Vlad asks him, So why do you say those things about Kanye and Dr. Dre? To which the game responded by saying, Bro, I was drunk, man. It's drink champs. What am I supposed to do? Right? And I get it, the game was drunk, you know? I mean, I've said some things I didn't mean when I was drunk. Well, you know when they say, they say when you drunk, that's the truth, Sam. They say you tell the truth when you really express how you feel. Not necessarily tell the truth, but you really tell how you feel. And if you're saying you were drunk, that means you probably really felt that way about Dr. Dre. That, that probably happened. But you ain't look drunk to me. You look sober as hell unless you uh, unless you one of them type of drunks that don't look like you get drunk, nigga. I don't understand it. But if I tell you something when I'm drunk, it usually means I mean it. So basically, I was uh, hollering at Nori them a little inebriated and uh i said some things that i that i meant you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna take it back i ain't yeah, no sucker yeah. but um having dre do anything for your project anything in your career touch any part of anything that you're doing in life is such a blessing mm. that um i shall not um ever get on that again so the game was drink yeah I mean, the level of disrespect that I think that he showed in that interview towards Dr. Dre was crazy. And now he kind of walking it back because he's trying to say, well, I was kind of tipsy. I was drunk. I mean, I meant what I said, but it's like, bro, if you was drunk and you you saying you was drunk and you meant what you said, but then you saying like, just say, listen, man, I apologize to Dre. I didn't mean to say all that. You know I mean, it was fucked up. I shouldn't have said that. But it's kind of like you kind of like trying to save face and act like you so tough about it. Like, knock it off, dog. Let's say we give him a pass for that, right? But this is still the case of the game saying one thing one time and then switching up his story and saying something else. And at the same time, it's like, does game realize he's on a public forum in front of cameras? I've said this before, but you can't say Dr. Dre, your biggest influence, the man that put you in position, that guy did nothing for your career. It doesn't matter how drunk you are. You can't say things like that, you know, because... But see, that just goes to show you how what type of person game is to me he's always been like that he's always been like that he never really showed like no integrity i think joe buttons got him one time when they was battling and joe button said to him after this i'm not i'm not going to say anything to you and if you do if you say something back to me after we squash the beef then that just shows me that you lack integrity or something like he said like that and I think that kind of put Game in a kind of a bind and Game couldn't come at Joe no more. I mean, he could have, but it would have just looked like an obvious uh, ploy because the way Joe worded it was was fantastic. Joe was so good, man. I don't know why he stopped rapping, man. The internet is forever. People are never going to forget what you said, including Dr. Dre. He might forgive you for what he said, but he will never forget that. Now, speaking of that point, I just learned something recently about how the game got put on. Now, this comes straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the game's mouth. There was a time when the game was going to be cut from Aftermath Records, but 50 said, hold on, I can do something with the game. Give him to me. So instead of being cut from the label, the game's career was saved by 50. 50, much as I hated him eight months ago, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which uh, we more than cool now. Uh, 50 was like, what? Game? No, 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 no. Like, let me get game. Don't cut game. Wow. We're going to take game on tour. We need a member of, like, you know, G-Unit is from the mm -hmm. West Coast. We got Buck from the South. Me, Yayo, and Banks are from the East. Like, game will be perfect. Now, I'm sure you all know what I think about this, right? I remember that. I definitely remember that. I remember that. 
that uh he he signed to uh G Unit and um I think after that he started dissing Fifty again and then Fifty was like, well I got the publishing to your music and you won't be able to put nothing out or something like that and and game game was all over the place. It's like so hard to follow him. Sometimes I feel like it's very hard to follow game, but let's keep going. I think we're all thinking the same thing. 50 Cent saved your career, and you repaid the favor by trying to destroy his career. And you still want to reunite with the group after everything you did? So at this point, we've all established that the game is the type of person that will stab you in the back to get what he wants. But this is a video on how the game lies, right? So let's get on to the next lie. So the game does an interview with Revolt, right? And in this interview, um, he says something like, I'm the biggest rapper in the world, and I'm number one. And yeah, I think if the game was connected to a lie detector test, he would fail that completely. Because I don't even think the game believes what he's saying, right? I think at this point he lies so much that he probably tricks himself into believing his own lies. I mean, come on game, we've all heard you say that Eminem is a better rapper than you. There's video proof of that. And I wasn't even gonna touch on this topic, but here's another case of the game saying one thing and then switching up his story. Like we all saw him say that Eminem is better than him. Another question, game, what do you think of recovery? Classic, I love it. Yeah. M's back? M's, I mean, Eminem is Eminem. I mean, that's the, that's the only lie he never told. <laughs> recovery definitely is a classic, I ain't gonna lie. That's a super classic. So that's the only lie I think he, he ain't tell no lie there. That's look hook him up to a lie detector right now. He passing a hundred percent. He's if you notice in hip hop, Eminem is the only rapper that that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. Even when I was going at fifty, and you know, and you know, me and Dre wasn't seeing eye to eye, man. I stayed away from the white dude, you know, because <laughs> he a problem. He was talking about he how he was gonna pick fights. If he were to come at you yeah. with like a, a, a industry beef, what would you have done? Run. And then in another interview, he says that he's better than Eminem. And, and I used to think Eminem was better than me. So what you saying right he now? He not, he not, he's not. Challenge, Game. hey, hey, challenge it. Game, you don't wanna go first. Now, I'm gonna give him a pass on this one because He's saying here, he's definitely saying he used to think that Eminem was better than him. And and I'm all for people issuing the challenge and not saying that you, you know, is better than Eminem. But if you believe that, it, I can't take that away from you. I mean, that's what he believes. I mean, it doesn't mean he's lying. But I don't think that's a lie. I, I have to give him a pass on that one because that one's more like he's saying... He basically saying like I you because he, he admitted he used to think that. So I gotta give him that one. I gotta give him that one. Yes, I do. What do you mean? Oh. Yeah, I do. The fuck you mean? At this point it's hard to keep up with everything. Like, so I guess now you believe that you're a better rapper than Eminem. But are you gonna switch up your story again and say that M is the better rapper? Is that coming? Is that interview coming? Or has it happened already? Maybe I missed that one. Now we've already covered about three yeah, I mean, I don't think, I, I don't know if he's going to do that. I just, I highly doubt that he's going to come out and say it again. I think he had his chance to battle Eminem. Eminem really didn't say too much to the game. It's not that Eminem's scared. I just think Eminem just, I don't think Eminem battles people close to home anymore. You had your, you had your uh, bunch of people that I think uh, he didn't really want to battle. So I don't think Eminem battles people close to home. So let's finish this out real quick. Four, five, I'm not keeping track. Incidents of the game switching up his story. But I'm telling you now, I've barely scratched the surface, man. The game is on. I'm just going to stop it there. All right, you know, link's going to be in the description. You know what it is. Yeah, man. I mean, I put it to you like this. I think that the game, I think that, uh, Honestly, the game should just stick to doing music. I don't think he should do any interviews. I think he should keep his mouth shut, stick to doing music. Because he's not bad. He's not a bad artist. I mean, he got some alright albums to me. Like, there's some albums he got. I, I mean, I wouldn't say he got any classics, but he got some pretty good albums. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some pretty good work. And I just think that... 
for the most part, I just think that game just talked too much. And maybe if he just shut up, then everything would be fine. But the other last part, I don't know about that being a lie. I mean, the man can actually say that, you know, if he says he's better now. Now, if he keeps switching it up or if he comes back and says, I've never said that. Like, but it just seems to me like he just says things and try to get out of them, you know what I mean? But, I mean, you know what it is, though. Hey, y'all. Have yourself a good night. Howdy, people.